Hi, everybody. This is John Jay, and I just wanted to cover a very simple concept with Form 8949 when it comes to reporting transactions that have to do with cryptographic currency. And this is going to be, I'm going to use uh, examples from gold and, um, and stock. And I'm going to speak generally also because this applies pretty much in any taxing system around the world. I know a lot of people outside the States are going to want to understand this. So um, I, I had made myself some notes. I don't normally read things, but I didn't want to miss anything here. So pardon me if it sounds like I'm reading, but partially I will be. Uh, I'm quoting some of the websites and some of the CPA accounting professionals, tax attorneys that are explaining about the so-called complexity of accounting for trades between coins. And so here's some language that I'm, I'm finding. The IRS defines cryptocurrency as property for tax purposes, which of course it does. I'm sure uh, your country defines cryptographic currency as property. Um, in the United States, <clears throat> there's a, an IRS publication called, uh, well, it's just numbered. It was published in 2014. So the IRS publication is 2014-21. And it says that um, what they're saying is generally, is that each cryptocurrency or trade or sale is at least reportable, a reportable transaction. This is true. And the possibility, the, the possible, ta it's possibly taxable. And of course that depends on your situation. Um, but this is just like any other property. It's like stocks or gold or things like that, equities as they say. If the taxpayer traded or sold cryptocurrency property, then a taxpayer must report this taxable transaction on form 8949 or whatever form your government wants you to use. In the States, it's gonna be form 8949. Now, let's see, I'm gonna, you can just Google this on the internet, right? You can just search for IRS form 8949 and the title of this form is sales and other dispositions of capital assets. This is the key phrase. This, per, this uh, uh, pertains to the dispositions of capital assets. All right. Now, if you read it quickly and you don't think about this, you're going to get sucked into this whole world of this complex system. Okay. And they're talking about if there's a sale. All right. And so the pitch is the CPA or the attorney, they're, they're pitching you. This is a sales pitch. You need to account for all your trades. And they believe that trading from coin to coin on an exchange, for example, or not, in a private hard wallet, any of that, it doesn't matter. What they're saying is that if you go from Litecoin to Bitcoin and so forth, then you have to account for the dollar value or the local currency value of those coins at the time, including all the volatility. And so it's such a difficult thing that we have to use software and then they come up with all these terms and factor and cost basis analysis and all this stuff. And it's not that complicated. Um, <clears throat> It, it's not that complicated because I know a lot of people have lots of trades, frequent trades, numerous trades from coins to coins to coins because they're trying to make the most money and they're on the exchange and they're just learning. It's not that complicated. So let's just assume for the sake of this discussion that we're talking about a person like myself that's, let's say I, I have to file a tax return in the United States, let's just say. <clears throat> so let's assume that that's the case. So the uh, CPAs and attorneys, they want to create this, I call it a priesthood, this thing, this magical black box that you have to go to them to get th work done to understand this complex system and it's not complex. The tax is being imposed on the sale of property. If it happens to be crypto coins, then that's what it is, but it's still property. If it happens to be gold, that's what it is. It's just property. And it's the property itself is not being taxed. This is the key element. It's the sale of it, the disposition of it, when the taxable dollars are received in exchange for the property. All right. So here's an example. A sale of property does not include buying stock. We understand that. A sale of property does not include buying stock for the buyer. It does for the one who's selling you the stock. Okay, that's a sale of the stock, but not for you. So if you're buying stock, that's not a sale or disposition of property as far as you're concerned. Um, it does not include buying gold. It does not include buying cryptographic assets of any kind. 
You can buy coins however you want. I've explained this many times, you guys understand. And I'm not talking about selling stock, gold, cryptos, only buying, right? The buyer is not involved in a reportable or taxable exchange or transaction, all right? In any of these three examples. Okay, so we all understand this. So the buyer in this, uh, these examples was not involved in the disposition of any asset, only the seller. And, and this reveals another important concept. Now, this is what I really wanna to get to in this whole discussion here, this whole explanation. In order for there to be a disposition of assets or a sale, there must be two different parties, two different parties within two different types of, with having two different types of interest in the property each of which is engaging in the transaction or exchange for his own benefit. And by definition, the benefits sought by each party are different. Even if you can describe them with the same exact words, the fact that they're sought by different people or persons means that there is a disposition of the asset, a change in the asset's position, disposition, or association with respect to one owner's benefit and the benefit of another. You may wanna to listen to that again. This is so basic that you don't even need, I don't even need to know what your laws are in your country, okay? This is around the world. This has always been the case. It's not a matter of statute somewhere. It's not, it is a matter of law. This is a matter of law. And I'll give you an example of what a matter of law is when we don't even care about the statute. Everybody understands this concept. Here's the example. Um, an innocent third party cannot have his property taken for the payment of a debt owed by another. I'm not responsible for that guy's debt, right? Everybody knows that. That's a law. Where's it written down? It doesn't have to be written down. We already know that. Okay. If the beneficial interest in property or property rights, this is the key concept here I want you to understand. If the beneficial interest in property or property rights if those interests are not conveyed from one person to another, then there is no conveyance or sale or exchange. This is true anywhere in the modern world. It doesn't matter what language, it doesn't matter what statute. The disposition of assets applies only when the property or property rights are conveyed for one reason or another to another person or individual other than the one who first possessed those rights. So if you think about this, if I'm taking Litecoin and Bitcoin, I, me, I'm selling Litecoin and Bitcoin and back and whatever I wanna do, I'm the one who's benefiting from this. It didn't leave my possession, it didn't leave my ownership, I'm just moving it around. Those transactions are not taxable. Now we can get into more complex explanation because I can talk about retail sales in a grocery store, for example, and I can show you how that's identical to what they're claiming is taxable with the, between the cryptos, but we don't have to do that. I think you guys get the point. The beneficial interests are not changed when I go from coin to coin on my exchange or my wallet or paper wallet or whatever I'm using. As long as the beneficial interests don't change, there is not a disposition of assets. So all this all these false claims by the accountants and the attorneys are just to create work for themselves, to mislead you. They should know better. I'm talking to you. I know some of you are gonna to listen to this and I'm not a CPA, I don't have your training. I'm not an attorney, I don't have that training. I don't have that formal training. But I can read and I can think and I understand the law and we're supposed to all understand the law. And you should not be telling people that trading between crypto coins is taxable. It's not 99% of the time, it is not taxable and it's not reportable. It's wrong and it's incompetent at the very least. It's probably even fraud uh, to tell people that and to keep them all scared so that they'll pay you huge fees to d fill out a bunch of forms that they could do themselves or not have to do at all when they could just manage their property a certain way and not have all, these, all this paperwork to do. It's ridiculous. So that's, an, you know, I'm motivated, as you can tell, I'm motivated to tell you guys this. So understand, if you wanna do some research on it, go look at what constitutes the beneficial interest in property rights, all right? So I hope that helps. Again, this is uh, 
pertaining to form 8949 in the states, you'll know what your own form is for your state. But the whole idea is that there's a question as to whether or not when there is a sale and the sale or exchange only takes place when there's a third party having a totally different set of beneficial interests. It has to be a completely separate party. And I would even venture to say this one last thing. If a husband and wife were moving coins back and forth, or maybe a family member, an immediate family member between immediate family member, I would even argue that that's not a disposition of capital assets. So I hope that helps clear things up. Thanks a lot for listening.